What, the summer heat? Oh, well, it's a wet heat. Real wet. Hey everyone, welcome to Wild and Weedy Farms. I'll tell you, the South has shown its stuff. This is year four for us here, and I think this is probably the warmest weather that we have had. It is scorching. Matter of fact, we had a heat and humidity advisory yesterday, and I've been busy at this point just drenching. I'm just putting the hose into the garden beds and drenching the, the raised beds and the, and the rows because it's just more than I can stand and, and water. I don't have that kind of time anymore. You know, it's funny, I was thinking about it. For those of you that have been with us for a while, you remember when we were just gardening with uh, the IBCs and that was oh over an hour to just hand carry water into the six raised beds, six to nine raised beds that we had in the beginning and I just couldn't wait for water, uh, a better system. So then we got the water pump which was great. Now I was pumping water, not a high pressure, but I was pumping water into the garden which was wonderful. But then <laughs> we ended up getting city water in for the well reasons that I've spoken about before and um, that was amazing. Talk about cutting off even more time. And I started to notice how incrementally as this thing grows, how you want the next step. Because yesterday I was thinking, boy, I need some soaker hoses. <laughs> so I don't even have to go out. I can just turn on the hose. But isn't that funny? I mean, I, starting from the IBCs and using just gravity and watering cans thinking well just standing there holding a hose would be great to now having that luxury of being able to hold the hose and, and get the watering done to thinking boy wouldn't it be great if I didn't even have to do that I mean what's next I don't know maybe teaching the dogs to come out here and do some gardening and picking the vegetables uh, but I thought it was kind of funny how um, the wants continue on. So I'm going to curb myself on that one and remember my blessings about the fact that we even have it easy and the luxury of having water on the farm after the three years that we didn't. Um, so I wanted to give you a, a quick tour. This year is no different than the last couple of years because we're doing building. Right now we're working on the bunny barn, trying to finish that. We were up till midnight last night working on it. Um, the garden, once again, is uh, left out a bit. So you can see that uh, my candy squash there, while it's looking green, it's a little wilted, so I gotta get in there and water it. I'm concerned I might possibly have vine borers in it. I don't, I don't know, because last year's ha didn't have any kind of problem like that. Let me take you over there and show you what I mean. Maybe one of you seasoned gardeners knows. Uh, let me show you, this is what I'm concerned about. I am concerned about this. I, I don't know if that's just what happens, that the stem just gets woody. And, and that is just natural for a squash, or if I have a problem that possibly is too late for me to inject BT into the vine part. I don't know. So if one of you brilliant people knows, I would love to hear about it. I also have this morning glory that will not, will, it won't stop. It just, it started last year. I don't know how the seeds got here. I do like morning glory. I don't like it all over my squash. Um, here is our row of tomatoes that this side I'm happy about because it was the cattle panel was put in. These rows were put in alongside the cattle panel. What I did on the other side is I made a mistake. I'll take you over there and show you. I used the previous holes I had dug pre-cattle panel. I'm stepping over the melons here. We've got some great melons coming in here. I'll show you really quick. Pretty excited about the melons coming in. I've got one that's ready to pick very soon. But what happened was I used the previous hole here and they were too far away from the cattle panel. So next year I have to scoop them closer if I choose to use this area again. I know I'll have to amend because I don't, I've learned it from all of you that you can't keep planting the same thing in the same spot without amending it. But that was the whole point of our giant compost uh, pile is to be able to keep things in the same spot but keep the soil that they're in fresh uh, by amending it in the fall and early spring. Um, 
one of the plants I wanted to talk about today, and one that I had on the list for future, but was so excited about it when my friend Serena and um, Lynn, when they were talking about the tomatillos and things, that I just went ahead and said, I've got to have those, and, and Serena got me a flat of them, because there was none in my area. That was super sweet of her. Um, so I've got these tomatillos that look like Two of them in here, but they're crazy big. So they're like these cute little lanterns. I just think they're adorable. Never grew them. So they grow like a paper lantern, and when you touch the lantern part, it, it's empty. It's like a shell of air. And then the tomatillo starts to grow inside of it. It's the coolest thing. So we love Mexican food. I love making enchilada suiza with a green sauce. Uh, I love just eating green so these are going to be very exciting. Uh, the tomatoes, even though they went in late, they are they are catching up. And this one is isn't that that one's a nice specimen right there. Um, and again, I was going to get rid of the tomato cages. It didn't happen because um, you know spring came and it surprised me because <laughs> it changes every year. It's never on the same never the same month, right? Uh, I wasn't prepared. Uh, didn't have enough cattle panels, and so what happened was as the uh, tomatoes were languishing in their little pots, I just, just started planting them. And that meant hauling out the tomato cages again and getting them in the ground. And as you can see, they work so well, and that is why I do not love tomato cages. That one's falling over. I've got to heave it back up, but I suppose it was better than nothing. I don't know. Like I've got nothing anyway because it's just laying there, crashing into my cucumbers, which is fine because I'm about ready to tear these two out. Um, the cucumbers are slowing down. I only got two five gallon buckets yesterday. Uh, cucumber chip video is coming up. I thought that'd be a cool way to preserve them. Pardon me again. Ooh, it's warm. Uh, I've never done cucumber chips before, so I thought it'd be a fun thing for us to do. Why don't we go walk down Cucumber Alley and uh, take a look at what's going on in there. The asparagus is still going crazy. And that is something this fall that I want to take out and, and replant out in the row garden. So here is, uh, this, was, this was my excitement, was being able to have the arch. I really wanted that. I really wanted the arch. And so I got it. And next year what's going to happen is it's not going to be all the cucumber plants. I'm going to have one arch, probably the back one, two cucumber plants. Okay, maybe four more plants. I'm thinking the Boston Pickling and Market More. I like the Market More a lot. They they are just like the ones you get at the supermarket, the longer ones. And then the Boston Pickling obviously are good. I want to make can next year. I want to can sweet pickle whole. I've got tons of relish. That I can Probably six. The strawberries are doing very well. Uh, we've been eating the fruits off of them, so there's certainly not enough this year to can. And this has been an experiment with the palette, but you can see when we kneel down here, the plants are growing strong. I mean, look at the size of those leaves. They're very healthy. Um, so we'll see how they are next year. Somebody had uh, mentioned to me that about year three is when they come in strong. We'll see. About that time, if they don't, I'll probably transfer them into either the berry patch. Maybe by that time we'll have the berry patch going. Or we'll make another spot out in, in future garden. Um, what else do we have? I've got cabbage coming in, everybody. That, I'm pretty excited about the cabbage. We love coleslaw. We love to make our fermented sauerkraut. So, as you can see, the worms have kind of gotten into it. But, on the whole, the heads are looking good, and I should be harvesting these, probably one today for some coleslaw, and then uh, more in the coming days. Um, the cauliflower is coming in well. I'm gonna probably pick that one today. And I've got uh, broccoli, some kind of, <laughs> remember I was supposed to mark everything? I've got some kind of broccoli coming in here. <laughs> I don't know what kind. 
Um, my dill didn't do too well this year, but I think some of that has to do with me and some of it has to do with I don't think I amended this pot, which is also showing up in the really sad, unfortunate cilantro that's there. So, uh, boy, it sure is a cautionary tale about amending things. Get your compost in there, get your other types of soil, however you are taking care, if you have beds or even your row gardens. I think without a foundation, in this case, your soil, your nutrients, you certainly can't do as well with your growing. And a garden will speak up. <laughs> it's not gonna pull any punches, it's gonna let you know, which is why we're looking a little yellow here because I have been remiss in my watering duties. But that is as it is. I have one other bed here. It's a little droopy. Now I did water this yesterday, so it needs another hit. This is a uh, acorn squash. Okay, I gotta be careful not to step anything, but there's acorn squash and sugar baby melons. And yeah, I overplanted. I, I, I'm noticing I have a problem. I overplant. So that's something for me to work on. I, I, I agree that having that cover on there keeps keeps the, the moisture in and that's good, but I think I need to dial it back a bit. I think that's just a little too much. So that's kind of where we're at at this point. Um, hopefully the greenhouses will go up this fall. We'll see. Finishing up the bunny barn with the cost of lumber finally coming down. It looks like the front of the large Coupe de Ville should be finished also by this fall. So these are all wonderful things. I'm very excited about the word finish. And then, um, boy, I'm hoping I can celebrate Christmas in the farmhouse. Please, everyone put out good thoughts and vibes. I would really like to be in our house um, with walls and some sort of power by Christmas. So um, there we have it. I'll leave you with some beautiful cherry tomatoes that probably will mostly pop into my mouth um, as, uh, as I'm gardening. Oh, I hope your gardenings are or gardens are growing well. There's nothing like a garden fresh tomato. And uh, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please go ahead and check out this video and this video and do subscribe and share. I would really love if you got the word out there about Five Dog Farm and uh, I love all of your comments. It's what keeps me going. So thanks again. This is Nikki from Five Dog Farm and I'll talk to you soon.